There's a lot of things you didn't know about MLB players, like the player who has a Chipotle addiction, or the player belongs in Fast and Furious. But first, I bet you didn't know the crazy thing Shohei Otani sleeps with. Otani was brought in for sleeping tests when he admitted that every single day, he takes two hour naps and sleeps for another 10 hours. So a company decided to help him become the sleeping goat by taking measurements of his body, combined it with his favorite positions to sleep in, and boom, they customized a pillow so exclusive for him, it's the only thing he'll ever sleep with again. This pillow fits Otani's head perfectly, but what Aaron Judge bought for his fee set a world record. Well, I think we're gonna start with the ones. Let's see here, LA to Chicago, those are a must. Rookie of the year. Rookie of the year. That one kind of speaks for itself right there. I was eyeing these green ones when I walked in, so we gotta go to green lows. Got you on that one, green toe, got you, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's switch it up. I talked about 11s earlier, so we'll go We'll go to the reds real quick. Red 11s, I got you, bro. Yeah. I make some good choices, or? I think you did. All right, so total today is gonna be 4,832 and 85 cents. Okay. Judge really spent over $4,000 on shoes in a single shopping spree, the most by an MLB player ever. But Christian Yelich has an addiction that's so crazy, it got him free food for a year. Another essential to my life would be Chipotle. We don't have it here with us. We can CGI it right on right here, burrito. And once that clip went viral, his old batting coach exposed a story about how Yelich was so addicted to the food, he ate Chipotle for 142 days straight. 142! When you're, when you're in the minor leagues, you're going to Chipotle. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. it's just it's just what it is. Now, all right, I thought that was cap until Yelich's own teammate confirmed the report. In the middle of a game, Yelich's team put the stat on the Jumbotron, and once Chipotle saw that, they gave Yelich an exclusive celebrity card, meaning he could get their food anytime, anywhere, for completely free. Man, get me that card. My DoorDash expense is looking crazy, Chipotle. But not everything that happens to MLB players is a good thing. Like when Jose Altuve became the target of a million dollar heist. It went down in Houston, Texas, cause that's where Altuve became the Astro star player, began making millions of dollars, and decided to buy a mansion. Now you'd think a place this nice would be secure, but what Altuve thought was his dream home actually became his nightmare. Some criminals have been plotting on Altuve for a while. They knew the location of Altuve's exclusive home and some expensive things he kept inside, like his million dollar jewelry collection. So cause they knew March 30th, 2023 was the season opening game for the Astros and obviously Altuve would be there, it was the perfect time to strike. They drove into his city, pulled into his neighborhood, and made their way inside. Two hours later, Altuve arrived home and found out that it was not only broken into, the criminals got away with his entire jewelry collection. Luckily all that was replaceable, and eventually when an investigation took place, all the criminals were caught and charged with burglary. But I bet you didn't know that Jazz Chisholm had his heart broken so badly by Michael Jordan, it motivated him to become an MLB star. Alright, so I was 10 years old, uh, Michael Jordan had a celebrity softball game in the Bahamas. Jordan sneaking out of the back, I asked him for an autograph. He looks at me, he turns around and says, one day make me want your autograph, kid, and just walks off. Do you feel like you use that moment to now to, well, to help you get to where you are? Oh, yeah. Bowling Ball Head really did all that to Jazz? At least Jazz signs autographs for his fans nowadays. Speaking of bowling balls, I bet you didn't know that Mookie Betts is the best bowler in the MLB. Got a bowling ball right here that's super essential to my life. With my family, my friends, we go bowl at least two to three times a week. During the season, I need to get out on the lanes, but it's kind of tough finding time. Um, but this year, I'm going to take some balls with me just to clear my mind and get ready for the next game. Storm puts either perfume or cologne, one of the two, in the bowling balls, and they smell really good. So next time you see a Storm bowling ball, make sure you go smell it. But all right, smelling balls and fingering holes, that ain't the only reason Mookie loves bowling. Anytime he steps into a bowling alley, he damn near bowls a chief key. 300. Man, Mookie's damn near better at his second favorite sport than his main. But what if I told you Max Scherzer suffers from a rare condition that only animals get? Just taking a look at Max's eyes. Uh, obviously that ain't normal, and I promise you it ain't some Photoshop like my clickbait thumbnails. Max was actually born with a rare condition called heterochromia, which was caused by a lack of melanin in his eyes and turned them different colors. This condition is so rare that the only thing I've ever seen with this condition were cute little huskies like this. Aww. Now it makes sense why Max adopted two of them just so 
we had twins, and Max never lets his condition affect him in a negative way. Some people notice it immediately, and other people, other people don't notice it at all. I always find it funny when people don't notice. I'm like, it, what are, you, are you not looking at me in my, in my face at all? I mean, I feel like it's so obvious. You know, for me, I love to have fun with it. You know, being on the dugout, you know, I, I say we don't need replay cameras anymore because, you know, I always sit there and say the brown eyes slow-mo and the blue eyes HD. When you go to the DMV, what do you put down? <laughs> the million dollar question. You know, do you need a three letter abbreviation for your eye color to be able to put in your license? And so, the, you know, the lady was like, well, what do you want to put? I was like, well, you can't put blue, you can't put brown. So I asked if you, know, you could put like BLBR. They're like, well, like we said, you can only use three letters. So I had to go back and, and look it up in a book. And sure enough, they had it. It was uh, dichromatic eyes, so D-I-C. Uh, wait a minute. Dude has dicks for eyes? That's crazy. I don't know how he drives. I know how Francisco Lindor does, though. But I bet you didn't know that he travels all the way to Japan just to get his ass beat? Oh, well, not only that, also to drive exclusive cars. We got a, a ride and drive uh, here in Yokohama. Nice. Nice. Uh-oh. Different. It's uh, different driving this side. It's like being a switch hitter. You got to hit on right side yeah. and left side. So, I, I mean, I got a nice car. Now you got to take me somewhere where it's, I can drift, like a Tokyo Drift car. Kind of Consider it done. <laughs> Damn, it's really living fast and furious Tokyo Drift in real life. But Jock Peterson did something only girls do to help his team win a World Series. When the Braves were starting their playoff run, all their fans were hyped. So Jock hit up his jeweler for something that would get all their attention. A pearl necklace? Yeah. Jock's jeweler was a little perplexed as to why a grown man needed that. But all Jock said was, he's just a bad bitch. And also, it's a mystery for everyone. They'll never know. From that point on, anytime Jock was caught in 4K, he was wearing his pearl necklace that cost him 4K. And his fashion statement took over the entire city of Atlanta. Have you seen more people coming in asking for pearls because of Jock? Yes, absolutely. We, uh, the men, which is really kind of shocking. Pearls became a trend to the point where the Braves sold replica pairs in their team shop, which had entire stadiums wearing them. So the hype fueled Jock and the rest of the team to keep winning in the playoffs until they eventually won the World Series. And since everybody believed the Pearls were a good luck charm, not only was he throwing Pearls to fans during the parade, the Braves honored him by putting a Pearl in the center of their World Series ring. But he ain't the only MLB player doing something girly. Fernando Tatis Jr. does something pink to honor the most important person in his life. Tatis's mom means the world to him. She was the first person Tatis called when he made the MLB, and he's always talking about how much she means to him. Dear mom, there aren't enough words to describe what you have done for me in this life, for the love that you have shown me, for bringing me in the right path every single day. I just want you to enjoy your day so we, the one that love you, can show you that we love you even more. So, enjoy your day, Mom. Thank you for always being there. And every day you see me on the field wearing pink, I miss you always with me. So, love you, Mom. Feliz Dia de la Madre. Dime la hora, mi amor. That was good. That was great. That was awesome. <laughs> Pink has become a go-to color for Tatis. Whether it's his glove, his sleeve, an armband, sunglasses, cleats, or the pink bat that he hit a home run with on Mother's Day. Mance even rocks pink fits off the field just cause he loves his mom and makes sure she's always with him. But now that we're getting into the top 10 things you didn't know about MLB players, let's take things to a whole new level. Like helicopter crashes, insane pranks, or the MLB player way to deal with a deadly illness. But before we get to those, Trevor May's love for Fortnite had him create one of the biggest Fortnite events in history. When Fortnite was at its peak, and even I was stealing my mom's credit card for V-Bucks. Uh, alright, alright, I wasn't the only one addicted, mom. So was Trevor May. God. Anyways, when Trevor started streaming on Twitch, he got partnered, gained nearly 200,000 followers, and began playing with some of the biggest streamers in the world. His gaming career was becoming as big as his baseball career. So at his team stadium, he convinced them to host a gaming event where they announced that fans could come into Fort Day, where they got to watch Trevor play on the big screen. Fans, nearly 400 bought special tickets, got a t-shirt, got to interact with these guys and watch them get after Trevor May's favorite game, yeah. Fortnite. This was something to watch. And this event went so viral, even other MLB teams started playing in their own stadiums before games. But Manny Machado had to think fast 
All because of a helicopter crash. When news broke that NBA legend Kobe Bryant passed away, it devastated the entire world. But it especially hurt Manny Machado, because Kobe was his idol. And most of Manny's fans knew this, because when he was traded to the Dodgers, the first thing he did was choose his jersey number to be Kobe's. Eight, and even got the opportunity to meet Kobe because of it. I believe it was game four of the World Series. He comes into uh, come to the field and throw out the first pitch, and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Nice, you know, like, you know, they knew obviously my background with Kobe wearing number eight in LA because of him as well. All this going in, they finally get him to come to the field that <laughs> he comes in and he tells them, hey, you're going to wear number eight, we're going to get your name. You know, Brian on the back of it, number eight, he's like, no, 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 like, I want Machado's jersey. When they told me, they are telling me the story, I'm like, what? Yeah. He's like, are you, I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, he wanted your jersey. I'm like, I mean, that's, that's just right there. I mean, I, I, there's just no words to explain it, like. For my jersey. Now that was easily the proudest moment of Manny's life, but with Kobe now gone, he didn't know how to get over it unless Kobe was a part of his life permanently. So Manny went out and bought a brand new dog to become his other best friend and named him Kobe. Now you gotta respect Manny for doing a gesture like that for Kobe, but not everything these athletes go through is so emotional. Unless you count literally shitting yourself in the middle of an MLB game. This is Kike, and he does what babies do. During that postseason, you had a moment. Um, I had a root canal. I talked to the doctor, and I was like, hey, I, I, my, my molar's killing me, man. He's like, oh, well, everything you're saying sounds like you have an infection. We'll send you some antibiotics. The only problem is diarrhea is a side effect. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I have Sorry. diarrhea every other day. Sure enough, I get, I get diarrhea. I had come in the game. I think we punched out Manny to get out of the inning. And I let go of it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. Those emotions made me like make my body like push, you know, because I'm flexing. I'm excited. And a little fork comes out. Okay. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. I think I just shit. <laughs> Sure enough, I go to the plate. Uh, my lower half is a little more slippery than usual. I punched out in three pitches against G R Garrett Richards. After striking out on three pitches in a playoff game, I was like, hey, dog, I just shit my pants, bro. To this point, I haven't realized we're wearing white yet. Mm. I get in the toilet. I take all my shit down. I was like, oh, fuck. I start mm -hmm. dying laughing. <laughs> but then I'm like, oh, fuck, we're wearing white. And I like put the sliders to the side. Sure enough. It was on the pants. The same stain that was on my sliders was on the white pants on Did national television. On? Let everybody out there in the world know that we're normal people and that shit happens too, you know, literally. Mm -hmm. But Poopin literally scooped him the biggest contract of his life cause not long after, a company sent him a million of their products and he tweeted a pic of him laying in dude wipes where he claimed he couldn't wait for his next attack. Mans really knows how to turn a shitty situation into a good one. I guess I might have to be around him more often, but I wouldn't want to be around Chris Bryant. Cause this dude pranked his fans more times than any MLB player ever. Mans is always plotting some. Like when he went undercover as a Lyft driver and drove his own fans around the city without them knowing. I'm not sure who the third baseman is, but they have, is it Chris Bryant? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, Chris Bryant, um, who's like supposed to project yeah. to just kind of be a stud. Do they really have a poster? That's he might be on the other side. I'm sure they do. because he's terrible. He's kind of their poster boy, or they're trying to make him their Are poster boy. Are baseball players athletes? I mean, I feel like they're kind of like chess players, man. Yeah, <laughs> chess players, yeah, they kind of just stand there. And it's they like, you know, they say chess is a sport, you know. You play ball or? I play volleyball. I play volleyball. What about you? I play baseball. Oh, okay. That makes yeah, sense. that's pretty good. So why are you in the pro? Yeah, not, I'm actually, not, not to make you feel bad about it. I'm actually the third baseman for the Chicago Cubs. Now, that's one thing. This is the time he pretended to be a college player and scared kids into thinking their spot on the team might get taken. We got his name from the European team that was here in October, and they had a guy, okay? And he's a big donkey, he's got crazy power, he can help us. Now that's cold, but there's even the time he became a pizza delivery boy and trolled a fantasy baseball draft party. What kind of people fall for, yeah, we're going to film a documentary on fantasy baseball. Those are definitely the people that are going to fall for me being a pizza delivery guy. So I'm going to take Chris Bryant. It's a good pick. Chris Bryant. Oh, that guy, oh. that guy's good. Chris Bryant. Thank you. And it's absolutely not a reach. And let me tell you why it's not a reach. Stand and breathe. That's fantastic. That guy right there? Yeah, thank you. He's humble enough to make adjustments to his game every year and he that, can be better than he ever has. That's right. 
He's a good guy. Like, who picked me? You're Chris Bryant? Yeah. <laughs> now, all right, I don't know what kind of pizza they ordered, but that place was a sausage fest. And sus things that players put in their mouth is actually what made Cody Bellinger the most memed MLB player ever. The first meme was born because of this clip, when fans claimed Bellinger looked more stoned than me. I don't even know how that's possible. Anyways, Bellinger never denied it publicly, so nobody knew if he was faded, daydreaming, anything. Till Jimmy Kimmel tried gaslighting the truth out of him. And Cody, do people tell you you're high all the time? You look like you're high? Because this is a picture that made the rounds. And then, I, and yes, put the other picture up there, please. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of Spicotti Bellinger we've got there. You get that? Have you been getting that your whole life? I am not high during the games, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Cody. You look at me in the League World Series at 12 years old, I look faded. I was not smoking when I was 12 either. Now, all right, he might have denied being high during games, but fans still thought he was a stoner. And on April 20th, he hit a homer that became a worldwide phenomenon. Because on 420, the betting odds of him hitting a home run were plus 420, and the one he hit went 420 feet. So his fans continued making him a meme, saying this was baseball players' faces when other athletes got caught smoking. They claimed he was so high, he couldn't even count. Munchies were all he could think about during games, and they even dug up every single pick on the internet of Bellinger looking faded. At the end of the day, you could argue he was just at the wrong places at the right times, aka a coincidence. But the weirdest coincidence I've ever heard definitely belongs to Trevor Bauer. If I were dude, I'd buy a lottery ticket or something, cuz. Odds of what happened to him have gotta be one in a trillion. Dude was customizing his dream car, a McLaren, and once he eventually bought it, I mean, the thing was crazy, and if this was my car, I would've been whipping that shit everywhere. Except to the McLaren dealership. Cause when Trevor brought his car in for routine maintenance, apparently, a semi-truck far away literally lost a tire. The tire flew all the way down the street, somehow bounced to where his McLaren was and smashed it so badly the car was totaled. That sounds crazy, I, I know. But he tweeted about it and eventually talked about it. Whatever happened to your car that was destroyed by a tire? That is a massive disaster right now. Uh, it spent two or three months in the shop. I don't know how it runs yet. I don't know, I mean, I ho I'm hoping it's repaired, but it's still up in the air about two or three months after it happened. So yeah, I mean, I gotta feel bad for dude. I can't even imagine my car getting ruined like that. Maybe Trevor should just change his jersey number for some better luck. Cause Blake Snell's jersey number helped him make MLB history. My whole life, I wore number four. It's my birthday is December 4th. When I got drafted, I was like scared to wear a single digit number because pitchers don't wear well. It's just like an unwritten rule, I guess. I was number 50 in big league camp. I talked to Matt Moore about it and I was like, hey, I hate number 50. I really want to be number four, but I'm scared that I'm a rookie. Like I shouldn't do that. And he was like, bro, just be yourself. Who cares what people think? Like, that's your number. And having your number just brings more confidence to you. I feel more comfortable in it. When I wear number four, I'm like, I gotta represent this number well. And uh, good thing Blake listened to his teammate. After switching his number, Blake played so well that he instantly became an all-star, which led him to becoming the first pitcher in MLB history to wear a single-digit number during the game. Was I the first one to be a single-digit pitcher in all-star games? That's awesome, I didn't even know that. Numbers in baseball changed Blake's life forever. But even though Giancarlo Stanton became an MLB star. Baseball's actually the sport he's worst at. Stanton's crazy story was exposed when a popular comedian got asked who the most famous person in his high school was, and even though he admitted it was Stanton, there was way more to it. John Carlos Stanton? And I thought he was going to the NFL. Is that right? Oh yeah, he was 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, as a senior in high school, like catching passes with one hand, pushing the dude off him. And then he would play strong safety. He was unbelievable. And I was, I remember thinking freshman year, I was like, if this guy doesn't go pro as a receiver, he could be the number one punter in the NFL. Punter? Because this dude could punt like nothing I've ever seen before. Giancarlo Stanton can punt? S send sky balls from the 20 to the to the end zone. It was in incredible. And then basketball season came around and I go, oh, maybe he's a basketball guy. <laughs> and everyone's like, no, he's a baseball player. And this white boy was right. Well, most of us would assume baseball was Stanton's best sport. In basketball, Stanton apparently walked into the first day of tryouts completely unknown, then grabbed every single offensive and defensive rebound in the first two minutes of the scrimmage. So he wasn't only let onto the team, their coach admitted that even though the team had three college hoopers and two D1 football players, Stanton outshined all of them. Coach even claimed that Stanton at a game were dude at 33 points, 22 rebounds, and watching him hoop is like watching Charles Barkley, an NBA legend. 
Hopefully he just wasn't as fat as Charles though. Anyways, as legendary as Stanton's story sounds, it gets even crazier when you realize he was an even better football player. When he played for the school football team, he was the best wide receiver and cornerback in the entire conference. And if a 90 yard touchdown wasn't enough proof, listen to what Stanton said when he was asked if he could have gone to the NFL. Uh, I believe I, I could have. Uh, I played against a lot of NFL guys now, and at the time, uh, Shane Vereen, uh, Richard Sherman, at the time, when I played them, is this guy, you shadow him. Wherever he goes, you go. That's that's your guy, and that's usually how it was for most of the guys that I played there in the NFL now, so. But that was exactly why his high school coaches said things like, honestly, baseball seemed like his third best sport. He really didn't focus on it until he was drafted. And what's crazy is, dude really got drafted to the MLB right out of high school, man. He's an alien, but he ain't ain't Drake. Drake? Funny enough, Drake's one of the only things motivating Mike Trout to be one of the best players in the league. On a normal day, stadiums know what to play when Trout walks up to the plate. <laughs> Bangers. Cause they want to see him hit a banger. Trout's game day playlist is full of them. New level, all the way up, but some of his favorites are sicko mode, started from the bottom, even trophies. All cause man is obsessed with Drake. And he actually wants to, to eventually hit the studio and create a walk-up song exclusively named after him. Yeah, you know, I've always used Drake. I like Drake, you know, when I want to get hyped for the game, I listen to some, uh, you know, hip-hop R&B. If only Drake made me a song, man. But in all seriousness, David Ortiz did something unbelievable for his biggest fan. Stefan wasn't just any kid. He was suffering from a scary disease and could die at any second. So Ortiz heard the story and had to make little man's dream come true. After coming with his family from Mexico to Boston when he was a toddler, Stefan Zepeda found himself in a world no child should have to know so well. A world defined by hospital rooms and by a harsh, unforgiving disease, neurofibromatosis type 2. He basically grew up in the hospital environment and he didn't really have a childhood. His schoolwork and bedroom are tributes to his favorite player. Why do you think he gravitated to David Ortiz? He used to tell me that, look mom, I look like him. We both speak Spanish. We have black eyes and black hair. We're good playing baseball. I look like him. So yeah, I love that. You know, since then, this big papi in the house is the one that rules. For his wish, Stefan wants to meet his hero, David Ortiz. But what he's about to get is a day with his favorite team that's more than he ever expected. This is so cool. First, a limo picks up Stefan and his family to take them to Fenway Park. And my first time in a limo. I can't believe your big day is here, Stefan. Fenway Park right there, see? And he gets out of the car with a bit of Ortiz-like swagger. Stop. And then the player Stefan has spent so much time comparing himself to, David Ortiz, stops by to say hello. It's my man right there. Hey. Hey, buddy. Hey. How you doing? Good. Good to see you, man. You look good in the uniform. Thanks. Oh, wow. It is a moment to be treasured as Big Poppy and Stefan walk onto the field together. You want to go to the green mall? Yeah, let's go. Just two ball players on an afternoon at Fenway Park. Now, you gotta respect Ortiz for caring so much about that one person and giving them the time of their life. Not long after, Ortiz was given the Make-A-Wish Hero Award while Stefan's family was in attendance as he accepted it. Unfortunately though, Stefan wasn't, because his battle with the disease came to an end when he passed away.